When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. And finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. These devils, these demons are looking for host. They want to cohabitate. They want to, uh, it's like a symbiotic relationship. This passage here says that's how they find rest. Rest. Yeah, but rest means they need to, they need to settle down on something. We want to give our enemy no rest. Let me say, it's the same thing Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit also wants to rest on you. Amen. The demon spirit wants to settle on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So it's up to us. Who do we give? permission to settle on us. When I say rest, the word set, rest is talking about settling down on you. Bible right. says in the, at the, you know, the river Jordan, the Holy Ghost descended on Christ like a dove, right? He rested he on rested. Him. We need to recognize that we are in a spiritual warfare. There are demons, there are devils, there are evil spirits, fallen angels, all sorts of principalities and wickedness in high places. If you look at the world today, especially the modern generation, we are facing the biggest mental health crisis there's ever been. It's true. People are going crazy. They don't even know why. And they've been going to counselors. They've been going to ta- going on medication, but none of it's helping. All that's been a temporary band-aid because what's the reason? The real root is demonic. Wow. A lot of it is demon possession, a lot of uh, evil spirit possession, and people have no clue. They try to behave well. They try to apply the behavioral therapy and modification. None of it's working. Only when the spirit is cast out, when an evil spirit is cast out, that person, whether male or female or child, can come to senses. 100% of people living on earth at some point or the other have been possessed by, there's been deposits of demon on every human race, except for one person. You know who was that? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus clearly said that in the gospels. He said, the prince of the world cometh, but he has nothing in me, he said. Amen. Demons, Michael, are very good at hiding. They're okay? deceitful. So they hide and they or cohabitate with the human being and they stay low under the radar for years. And you might think there's nothing wrong with you, but all the while they've been wreaking havoc. They are classic parasites. They suck the life out of you without right. even you knowing. Right. It'll sit on different parts of you. And this is why my Christian friends, listen, most of the churches in the Western world are not talking about spiritual warfare anymore. They're talking in intellectual. They should be. Yeah, but they should be. They're, they're, but that's why the church is bleeding. Like you're looking at men and women coming to churches, listening to good philosophy of being good or bad, but that it's more than that. You have to cast out evil spirits out of people Amen. and get them set free so that their mind, their body can perform the way it should be. That's right. Yeah. The Bible says that demons come to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. Yes. So these are not things that we want hanging out in, a, on, or around us. Correct. Demons will try to push you into areas that are not good for you. They okay. come to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. Okay. Uh, Mark 9, 20. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So did you notice that word? He said it would come in, these demon spirits would come in and would cast him. Right. Meaning it would push him, it would propel him to do something that he doesn't want to. Right. This is the classic things about demons and devil spirits across the board. In this case, in this um, account of Mark, we see this uh, demon spirit was propelling, was pushing this, casting this child into fire. Right. Okay. Meaning, really he, trying to. But harm when, the, when child. the public looks at you, it feels like the child is jumping in. Right. But a spirit is behind you, pushing you. The same thing we see with murder and rape and rage and the whole nine yards is always some spirit behind trying to push that person to do this crime. You cannot deal with demon spirits and evil spirits politely. There is no politeness with them. It's a fight. You got to rebuke them. You got to blast them out okay the power of god exactly there is a level of power when jesus rebuked the devil it's not like what you all think or what you see in the movie he blasted the devil out when uh, when demons saw jesus they said son of man have you come before time to torment us right they know their end michael they know bible demons know bible more than christians and they know their end demons try to get settled in different parts of our body um some of the uh Parts where they settle, forehead, the mind to control your thinking, fear, right, anxiety, depression, uh, phobia, anything that you can think of schizophrenia, bipolar, all this is the devil. Okay, he wants you to work in duality because God created in his image, who is God's image, 
However, the enemy wants you to behave some, like something else. Duality. Right. He wants to create just bipolar. To be double-minded. Double-minded, bipolar manifestations, the whole nine yards. Other demonic deposits have been seen in shoulder area. People are always burdened and stressed out. And, right. And shoulder represents carrying burdens. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when, when deliverance ministers break that bondage out, boom. You feel so you feel light. You feel so relieved and light. You feel so good. Other parts, heart, kidney. Uh, arms, legs. I've seen people's legs being bound, meaning their forward movement, not just physical movement. They cannot move forward anywhere spiritually either. They have a right. calling, but this is how the devil. This is how demons play crafty role. You know, they they come in the hiding. They don't make many much noise. They slowly settle down in one of the areas of your body or your soul. In the soul realm, like I said, they could bring uh, things like anxiety, right. fear, wrong depression, thinking. wrong thinking, wrong religion. You know, if you look at so many wrong religions, even within the Christian sect, okay? The next sign of uh, demon possession is over-talking. Mm-hmm. And I've seen a lot of good Christians do over-talking. That's what the Bible says, in the multitude of words there are sins. You can transgress, right? So whenever you find yourself talking more than what's needed, understand there is a demon behind it. Fourth one, over-indulgence in food. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Especially when we have a drive to go all out with Fries and burgers. So what we're saying is demon spirits would either try to persuade you with an existing weakness, will give you more fuel to the fire, to your weakness, fire called weakness, and then or, or would would bring thoughts and uh, voices that you have not even tried. They would say, hey, you know what? Why don't you try the brothel? Why don't right. you try this this time? All these kind of... So either way, if we indulge in it, God holds us responsible. Whether we... Um, Accidentally did it or purposely did it. This is why we have to, Bible says, be holy as I am holy. There's a lot of due diligence and maintenance. And holiness means we're going to stay away from these environments. That will set us up. Right. And uh, But unfortunately, the world is a minefield. There's all sorts of dangers and snares across the world. The minute you t- turn the TV on, the minute you step down the street, there, there is promiscuity. There's all sorts of um, ungodliness going on. The next sign, Michael, that you have a position of demon is pride. Right. It's a Meaning, big one. It's a big one. Even among Christians and non-Christians, whenever you are going with an attitude of, oh, I'm better than anybody. Right. And you're looking down on people, know that there is a demon position. There's probably a demon there. Ab- not just probably. There's absolutely a demon. Because I was there years ago when I used to look down on people. I'm telling you, those, those demons make you think that you are perfect and everyone else is horrible. Right. That is not from God. It's not true. It's a demon position. Why am I telling you this? The more we know how demons settle down, the more we can repent of those behaviors and cast out those spirits. Because without your repentance, these demons won't go. Right. Keep in mind, Satan, the chief of all demons, the Bible says he was full of pride. pride. That was his, that's what brought his downfall. Exactly. So when you're full of pride, you're like him. So when demon is cohabitating in you, there is one of these signs, pride. You are suddenly, demons make you think highly of yourself and you look down on everybody else. You have no love. You just are using others for your purposes. And But I'm telling you, if you don't repent, the demon will take you down the grave. Amen. That's how bad it is. And the next one, uh, you have a sign of a demon position is twisting your words. Okay? Oh, yeah, that happens. Oh, yeah. So if you have yeah. a if, demon position... You will either misunderstand what a godly person or a minister is saying, right? Or you will twist their words, and then you'll communicate that to someone else by twisting it. So whenever you're, you're catching yourself misunderstanding others a whole lot, or twisting or distorting what others are saying, there's a demon position in it, right? So another uh, sign that you are, have a demon position is you're unteachable, right? You are not ready to receive feedback because you think you're right. Let me tell you, no matter how high you are in the spirit. There's always something that you can take from the feedback others are giving you. Christians are disciples. Christians are disciples. They are learners. We should at no point, Michael, be close to feedback, even from our worst enemies. I'm talking right. about that. Even when our worst enemies throw stones, try and um, audit your life and right. say, is there any merit in what they're saying? Because most of the time we are like, oh, no, no, he hates me or she hates me. That's what they're saying. God has given me the grace to even look at their, when the enemy stones and see, okay, is there something that I can correct here? Okay? We got to be teachable. We got to be pliable in the hands of God. We cannot be unteachable. When you catch yourself in any of these signs that we just mentioned, you got to repent of any of these three, whatever the Holy Spirit is showing. It might be your right. own weakness. Right. It might be witchcraft and sorcery, or it might be generational. 
generational curse. True. And you get, I, I sometimes pray, Lord, I repent of the sins and my forefathers, what I have committed. May the blood of Jesus Christ cover them and cancel those sins and Amen. its effects. That's why repentance is so powerful. When you suddenly become aware that my pride is wrong, my over-talking is wrong, my gluttony is wrong, my over-indulgence is wrong, all these propensities that I give in to is wrong, the demons start to lose their hold. Right. Awareness is key. This is why Apostle Paul and Jesus taught us about daily denying, carrying our crosses. This lifestyle is going to be one that requires some sacrifice. Right. If do you love God? Do you now know the truth? Then let's walk in the truth. There is there is suffering, there is tribulations, but we're going to stand forth for the truth that knowing that we are in a present evil world. Apostle Paul said this is a present evil world. That's right. We're going to fight the fight of faith. We're not going to compromise. So first step is repentance, second step is renunciation. Okay. So not only I repent of my agreements, I I vocally say I don't want you. I reject you demon. Right. That's good. You might have came into my life um, I may accidentally or purposely, but I'm just telling you now I don't want you. So I say I renounce all agreements with darkness and I welcome the kingdom of the light. Amen. This is what I say. Look at the uh, Luke oh, that we re- read earlier. It says the demon spirits go out of a person, right. evil spirits. It goes searching and then what happens at the end? It brings what? Seven, Seven other spirits. spirits. So what I'm saying is when you get cleansed, you cannot leave a vacuum in your life. That's why I do this. I, what I say is, Lord, I renounce all agreements with darkness. I command all evil spirits to leave me, but I also welcome you, your spirit. Amen. I got to replace this vacuum with the light of God. That's my vocal. That's why it says out of your mouth you should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Similarly, I say I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Take over. Imagine a throne in your heart that a demon is sitting on. Mm-hmm. You eject the demon, but you have to invite Jesus Correct. Christ to be king of that area Amen. of your life and submit to his lordship. Right. Because God wants you to awaken to your divinity, your sonship, and the forgiveness of sins. The enemy doesn't want you to know that. The enemy wants you to be mediocre. Your effectiveness on earth is greatly diminished as long as you have these demonic deposits. That's right. Until you go through a deliverance ministry, you cannot be utilized. That's true. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we stand before you now repenting you. Yes, Lord. of having demons, of doing wrong, opening of doors. opening doors, yes. of the pride, of the indulgences, of all of the things, Lord, that has yeah. is, is, is brought the demons in. We but we repent and right now it. before you and renounce them. Yes, Lord. And I now well, command each and about. every spirit to go out in the mind mighty name of Jesus. Belong to Jesus. We saturate every single listener of this show you, right Spirit. now with the blood of Jesus, Jesus. Christ that casts away all sin. Thank and you, now Lord. no demon has any right to stay in Thank any you, person Lord. under the sound of my voice. Be free in Jesus name.